You're watching HFO TV. I will give a quick update on just the what we're seeing in the in the apartment market since we were last forecast that we did in January. We've seen the overall vacancy uh, increase slightly from a, a low of 3.11 in the fall of 2013 to 3.4 in the spring of 2014. So we're still we're historically low vacancy rates. Most of that's attributed to the uh, new construction that both these guys just mentioned. So we've seen that. We've seen rents increase uh, in the last six months to $1.16 a square foot. So things are still on a projection there. And in regards to kind of the hot topics for multifamily, it is the development pipeline. Uh, right now there's over 16,000 units either under construction or planned for the Portland-Vancouver area. Predominantly most of those are in the city of Portland and then in the outer west side kind of fueled by Intel. Uh, that doesn't even take into account the over 7,000 units that you hear people talking about that haven't been submitted for plans. So we're looking at you know possibly 23,000 more units uh, coming into the market. This is the largest we've seen, you know, F5, I, I would guess, so uh, in our lifetime. We forecasted in January we would see continued renter demand, um, and actually we've seen that. Uh, even with this influx of new, uh, new apartments coming online, it has been due to the immigration, uh, so we've seen that increase. We predicted vacancy rates would increase slightly, but remain among the nation's lowest. We got that one right. Again, we're up at 3.4, which it, you know, is, again, very, very low. So we are still some of the lowest vacancy rates in the United States. And we also predicted rents would increase, but they would increase a little less slowly than what we've seen. Rents have gone up 11%. If you take spring of 2013 to the spring of 2014, according to Multifamily Northwest last report. For the last six months, they've gone up 5.4%. So they've gone up very less than what it was the previous six months, but so I, I'll give us a lukewarm on that one. So we have seen a little bit of slowdown in rent appreciation, but not significantly. So it's, it's kind of outpaced what we expected. Um, in regards to transactions, we expected institutional transactions, uh, 100, you know, 10 million and up to hold steady. Uh, right now, if you take, if I, you know, take year-to-date closings, we're a little bit behind pace, but typically on the larger transactions, we'll see predominantly a lot of those closing in third and fourth quarter. We know of a lot of properties that are on the market second quarter that are going to close this third quarter. So we, we predict that we'll see institutional transactions to be a little bit higher in the terms of number of units that we saw sold last year. Demand is still increasingly high. There's a lot of capital still chasing deals. Believe it or not, we've even seen a little bit of a compression in cap rates in the suburban properties. I don't know if we've seen much. We've, you know, we're at 4% cap rates in core institutional uh, units. We haven't seen real compression there yet, though we've seen rents increase, so values are continuing to go up. And on the non-institutional, we thought they would increase. They've actually been pretty steady, actually a little less, uh, so we probably got that one wrong. It'll be kind of wait to see what third quarter brings. Uh, we expect to see less transactions this year than last year in the non-institutional size, and that's really just because of lack of product for sale. Uh, a lot of investors don't have an, an option to go, and so they're holding on to their properties. Uh, that may change in the next coming in the months, but it'll be see. I think we'll be kind of on par to what we saw in 2013. The things that we're worried about are the same things we've been talking about in this market for the last two years. You know, it's interest rates increasing and cap rates increasing with them. Wages, you know, not increasing, and that effect it's going to have on rent growth. Yes, we have a lot of people moving in into the area, a lot of employment growth, but when you have 10 people moving in and there's five jobs, there's not a lot of motivation for an employer to raise, raise the wages, which then affects how much can we actually charge for rent. And then the impact of new construction. We're starting to see it with a little bit of the, um, you know, slight vacancy increases, but again, with the immigration, the real question is going to be the rent levels on this new construction. You know, in closing, Portland Park Market continues to be, have a strong run, even with the huge increase in new construction. People like living here. They always, you know, they're still moving here as evidence, and they are moving in the city of Portland. And this demand continues to give our market strong fundamentals. So in Portland, we still think we'll see growth opportunities in apartments over the long term. Thanks for watching HFO TV. To learn more about HFO, call or visit our website.